Our first caller is James from Georgia. Hey, what's up, James? How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm so excited to be here today. Like, I can't believe I'm actually talking to you guys. This is a dream come true. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm currently in the Army National Guard right now, and I'm hoping to go to Ranger School this upcoming April. Um, my current goal, I'm trying to increase my endurance so that I can pass a Ranger physical fitness test, which requires me to be able to do 49 push-ups in two minutes, 59 sit-ups in two minutes, five-mile run in 40 minutes or less, six pull-ups. Um, and then my personal goal is to get my five-mile run down to 35 minutes here at home, so that way there's no doubt that I can go to Ranger School and pass the RPFT. Um, I'm also trying to increase my endurance with rucking 12 miles with a 43-pound ruck. I need to be able to do this uh, 12-mile ruck in three hours or less. Um, let's see. About a m- month and a half ago, I hired a personal trainer. Um, I found a guy on Instagram. Um, he claimed to have gone to Ranger School. He claimed to have worked with um, Special Forces Group. And he claims to have been training soldiers like myself who want to go to Ranger School or SF Selection on the side for the past four or five years. Um, he's been having me do a lot of Metcons with long distance running as well as strength training all on the same training day. For example, in the first, in the first month, he had me doing four days a week of something like um, one of the training days was bench, uh, three sets, four to six, 85% of your training max, deadlift, um, building up 85% and doing doing two sets at 85% of three to six reps. Um, then doing a 21, 15, and nine pull-ups and wall ball um, and toast bar, uh, Metcon, as fast as you can. And then going into incline dumbbell bench, three sets of eight, dumbbell hammer curls, three sets, 10 to 12, and then going in for a five-mile run at the end of it. Hmm. Um, It was killing me doing stuff like that. I had not been doing Metcons. I'd been running um, all of y'all's MAPS programs, MAPS aesthetics, MAPS anabolic, MAPS performance, MAPS strong, um, MAPS anywhere. I've been doing MAPS prime. And I mean, y'all made y'all's programs and, you know, like there's no Metcons in any of those. (laughs) (laughs) Intentionally, yes. I was dying. Uh Um, So after the first month, I talked to the guy, um, told him I couldn't do four days a week. I'm currently a RN that works in the hospital at a pediatric cardiac ICU, works night shift. And doing four days a week, I mean, I was going in there off of no sleep, having the caffeine up um, just to be able to get through everything. And by the end of it, I mean, it was doing everything I could just to get home. I bet. Um, Since then, talked to the guy. Um. He's got me down doing three days a week now, of pretty much the same style of training. Um, let's see. Yeah, doing three days a week, the same style of training. Um, I followed you guys for about three years now. Um, I feel like he's just throwing everything in the kitchen sink at me um, without any real progression strategies. Um, he also refuses to give out his personal phone number for me to be able to contact him or his actual last name. So I have no idea to even... <laughs> verify if this dude is telling me the truth about anything (laughs) so friend claims to have found him on facebook apparently she's good at stalking people i don't know it was kind of funny but whatever (laughs) believe her girls are really good yeah we will find a way anyways like he wants me to contact him through his like company's instagram and his company's email instead and he's pretty quick to email me back but it's still kind of weird i mean y'all have given me little red flags to look out for and he kind of checks them all off so my question basically is what would y'all recommend me do to increase my running endurance and rucking um, to get a five mile time to 35 minutes, a 12 mile ruck in three hours or less. And then just trying to maintain as much muscle mass as possible to help me not get injured. Yeah. <laughs> how many times a week right now are you doing the rucking right now? How, how, how often do you, do you test this? Um, so what I do for rucking, um, the rucking I've not as worried about. I'm, been doing it for four years now. Um, the best way I've learned to train for rucking is actually by biking. Um, it's got my ruck time down from three hours to in college, I was doing a 12 mile ruck with a 50 pound ruck in two hours and 15 minutes. Okay. Mm. Pretty good. You know, you know, the, something that a lot of people uh, kind of don't consider when it comes to, you know, passing physical type tests 
is that a great deal, a, a, a large percentage of your success doing those tests is actually getting good at the skill of the components of that test. Okay. So to give you an example, um, you know, you, let's say you, you, you wanted to get better at doing pull-ups. Well, yeah, you can make your lats stronger. You can make your back stronger doing different exercises. But one of the best strategies would be just to practice pull-ups because that'll get you back your back stronger, but also it's practicing the skill that you need to actually you know do in this particular test. So training for specific tests isn't as complicated as people think. I think one of the best strategies you could do is literally practice the test a couple days a week, two or three days a week, do the tests that they're going to be asking you to do in order to you know get into ranger school. And then you may want to add one day a week of basic traditional strength training with mobility, mm -hmm. and you'll probably be just fine. If anything, you'll notice that you'll you'll improve you'll improve at a pretty rapid rate. I'm glad you stopped what you were doing earlier when you noticed that you just Get had no energy to go to smashed, work. Smashed, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's been your tires in the dirt. Yeah, that's a really really big red flag. Like you should not feel like you're totally zapped and your performance is uh, declining when you're doing a workout. Well, if there's if he's not doing any if the test the ranger school doesn't require you to do wall ball, there's no fucking reason for you to be doing that. Mm. There's other than to just exhaust you to exhaust you. So it makes no sense. It makes no sense to do a movement like that if it's not going to benefit anything else that you're doing. But you know, you, you are he is an example though of somebody who, you know, we talk about weight vests like always the, yeah. the knucklehead guy who's wearing a weight vest in the gym that probably has no business wearing it. Yeah. This is a perfect example of somebody though that this is I would do the test and I would slowly scale the weight vest, right? So I would I would run the test with mm -hmm. a light weight weight vest, improve my time, start to slowly add weight to the vest, sure. slowly add weight. Before you know it, you're going to you're blazing through the test with, you know, 40, 50, 60 pounds on you. And then whatever you need to do for the, t I don't know what the weight, what's the weight for the actual test? 40, 50, 30, you, 35 pounds. Is that what he said? Yeah. For uh, the ruck, it's a 45 pounds. Oh, 45, 45 pounds. Yeah. So yeah. if you could get up to where you're doing 50 pounds, you know, mm -hmm. going, going through yeah. the test, like. You, Is this you, incline or are you doing it on like roads? It's on a road. So it'll be some incline, some decline. Yeah. So he here's a good example of kind of what I'm talking about when I say, you know, use the test as your workout. What that doesn't mean is three days a week you do the exact test. So in other words, you don't do the exact 49 push-ups and as fast as you can and you know run your five miles and try and get it under 40 minutes. What it means is you're doing the exact same exercises, but in different uh, you know different intensities and volumes. So for example, and this is just I'm throwing this out there, one day a week you may do the actual test. So you're doing the exact numbers, the exact times that you're aiming for yeah, and distances. And trying to improve. Each and time. trying to improve it. The other one other day a week, it might be half. So cut yeah. everything in half and then do the other do the exact test. And then a third day a week would be down to a third. So you're almost doing like a sprint um, in your training. So something like that would, would get you to improve quite dramatically. And then one day a week of like Whoa. four to five compound lifts yeah. and some mobility work. Um, and you're probably going to be better than okay. Where, where would you say is your biggest area of struggle uh, in, in all run. those different items? The run? The run. Okay. I can get the push-ups on. I can get the sit-ups. I can find the pull-ups. The ruck, I'm not really that worried about. It's just one of those things that you just got to push through. Mm -hmm. But the run, um, my five-mile run right now is currently sitting at like 43 minutes. Um, and that's well-rested going into the run at Ranger School. It's going to be six o'clock bright and early um, in the morning, probably earlier than that. Um, we'll go into our range of physical fitness test. So it's going to be straighten the push ups um, for two minutes, straighten the sit ups, straighten to the run. And are you getting up to, at six and, and sort of emulating that some days uh, with your running schedule? Uh, this, sorry, what was that? <laughs> are are you emulating that in terms of like what time of the day you train and everything else? I try to. Um, working nights is a little bit difficult. Usually, uh, um, yeah. My my training schedule now is I work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, at the hospital. Today is Wednesday. It's usually a rest day because I try to wake up around two o'clock so I can flip myself back to days and not be a mm -hmm. night owl with nothing going on. Well, the and endurance part is going to be something that Thursday, you're Friday, down. Saturday, I'll get up early and go run. Okay. Yeah. Just, just a gradual progression of that. If that's the area of focus, I would just like gradually start to include that a bit more throughout the week and, and start, you know, adding a bit more time 
devoted to that. Yeah. The, the other thing that I might I might add that Sal, you didn't say on those example days is you know you, a, a strength day where you actually load all these things, right? So maybe you're not getting 58 push ups or 69 sit ups or six pull ups, or whatever. But load a, do a heavy day, sure. Do a heavy loaded day and get strong at all those movies, very movements. Very uh, very rarely do you see people do like loaded sit ups, but this would be a perfect yeah. example of one of those three or four days I would do like some loaded sit ups yeah. to get strong. So so. So in other words, you're doing the same skills a few days a week. Some days it's the same distance and exactly like the test. Some days it's loaded in much shorter uh, amount of time yeah, or more reps. Straight, more strength focused. Right. Other days it's shorter and faster. So you're practicing on sprinting through. Instead of running five miles, you're running two miles, but you're running it really fast. Um, so that's that's what we what I mean by p focusing on the skill of what you're doing. You definitely want to do some mobility work too because you're doing the same movements over and over again. So you're running a lot, you're doing a lot of push-ups, a lot of pull-ups. If you don't do mobility work, if your technique and form is even off a little bit, you could find yourself with some nagging injuries and then forget it, right? You're not able to do what you want to do because uh, things hurt. And then one day a week, you do like four basic strength training exercises and you should not fatigue yourself. You're just kind of practicing your deadlifts and your squats and your presses and that kind of stuff. And then you're you're probably pretty much set. Now, the other part of your question was keeping as much muscle mass as possible. I, I would forget, not that you're not going to keep muscle mass, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about aesthetics. Don't worry about anything else. Not only that, that actually is not advantageous for what we're yeah, training for hinder, right now. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. focus on performance because the ranger schools, they don't give a shit what you look like and how great your pecs look. They only care about your performance. Now, after that, after you pass and you know maybe you can train for aesthetics and that kind of stuff a little later, but... For now, it's all focused on performance, and nothing is going to give you a greater return than actually practicing the things that you have to do in the test. I mean, it's, it's quite remarkable. I mean, there, I've, I've trained with athletes and people where I beat them at exercises all day long, but then when we do a specific st skill, even if it uses the same muscles that I typically am stronger at, they kick my ass because they practice those skills so often. So don't discredit that. What you don't want to do is look at your – overall general fitness as the goal. Although that is an important thing to focus on, you want to look at the skills because the Rangers are, school is testing you specifically on skills. What they're not saying is, we're going to generally test your endurance and we're not going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to generally test your, your chest and tricep strength, but we're not going to tell you what it is. They're literally telling you, you're running, you're doing push-ups, you're doing pull-ups, you're doing sit-ups, and you're going to be doing a ruck. So because you know those specific things... you got to get good at them. Yeah, Master majority get, of your... Get, get strong at them, build endurance around it. them. I mean, that's it's focused around mainly around that. And like you said, I, Sal, I would only add a couple of the big you know four lifts in there just to complement some of that stuff but yes. it would, i would not do it to fatigue i would do straight sets plenty of rest i think that would be a, a great strategy for you yeah anytime somebody needs to take a test for something what they're actually it's it's almost like this like okay let me ask you a question right let's say i was going to test you on uh, general physiology and i'm not going to tell you on human physiology and i'm not telling you what i'm testing you on you'd have to learn the whole human body to prepare for some random test. But what if I told you, here's the 10 questions that I'm going to ask you on the test. What are you going to spend your time focusing on, right? You're not going to waste your time on general physiology. If you want to pass a test, you're going to focus specifically on the 10 things that I'm going to test you on. So that's, they're, they're literally giving you the workout that the only real thing you need to focus on programming is one day a week, do exactly what they're going to test you on. One day a week, do it maybe half distance, half volume, try and do it faster. And another day a week, do it even shorter, but maybe loaded. And there you go. Okay. Now you're kind of phasing each one of those skills for strength, strength endurance, and then just endurance. And it's going to make you better at the test. Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent. Now, I know you said you had a lot of our programs. <laughs> you have them all. Get them in the forum. <laughs> yeah. Are you in our forum, James? Um. I think I am still. I haven't paid for it in a while, but okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna charge you because you've been skating by without, <laughs> yeah. without paying. What the hell's going on? You've been getting no, away scot free. No, I'm just kidding. If if you are in there, James, what I would like, uh, if you decide to fire your your no name trainer, is I would like for you Tog. to yeah. hit to uh, yeah, every month really. or so or every few weeks, go in there and and, and tag us. And yeah, I would love to hear the update on this. Ask questions, and there's other people in there. We have other military people in there who are okay. experienced and other trainers and just, you know, get some consensus and kind of get some 
virtual coaching, you know, that mm. way. I think that'll that'll benefit you greatly. And and then, if, if you're not in there, we'll get, we'll let you in for free, by the way. And then James, yeah. what is what's the etiquette if uh, if you and I are friends and you pass Ranger School and you get one of those shirts? Can I wear one? Is that like okay or is that like frowned upon? <laughs> I'm serious, serious question. I mean, I can de- I can definitely get you one. I I don't want it until you make it. When you make it, I want one and then I rock it. And then if people ask me, I'll say James is my friend. Yeah, I don't and, think you can I'll, say you're a ranger. It's got to say something like yeah. you're no, no, no. A my, of I used a to have one. My boy, because my boy had one, and it, it just says Ranger across the six shirt. Yeah. I, I know you know, right, James? Yeah, yeah, they you, look awesome. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, and not and they don't just like hand them out all over the place. Yeah. So it's like they're rare to right. get a hold of. And I, I want to make sure I have a friend that I can say that's a, that's a ranger right now. So when you get past, you do that, you hit me up, yeah. and then yeah, you do all the hard work, and we'll wear the shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. S- send us an Sounds extra good. medium, extra medium, please. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, James. All right. Thank y'all. No problem. Right on. Yeah, when you it's uh, when you have a specific test, you know that they're going to test you on. They're literally giving you generally the workout that you want. It's almost why like they're it, giving you the answers. Why, why do? Why does this CrossFit make it way into so many things like this? It, it, <laughs> because that's the media what they think is like, I got to get all this endurance and strength all at once. And and so it just, that's the one where everything gets, you know, so muddy because you, they just smash it all together. You know what I, it, you know, it kind of works. That's why. Because For a if, very temporary window. If, I mean, if this poor guy wasn't. It works t- better than nothing. I right. Guess. Well, yeah. well, I mean, if he wasn't, if he wasn't like, uh, you know, go working and had a, a life on top of training, he probably could sustain this, you know, ridiculous amount of training that they have him going on. And he'd probably build so much resiliency that he would be able to power through the test and actually do okay. So maybe he would pass this test with this going this route. But there's such a smarter way to go about it. I love the analogy. Yeah. I've never I've never heard any of us use the analogy like that. Like you're right. Like you have a test, mm-hmm. you know what the questions are. Mm-hmm. You could go study a million other things related to that. You know all the other exercises that, yeah. that exist, or just refine what's actually going to be there. Yeah, or yeah. just know those ten yeah. questions inside and out. And I love breaking that apart, like you said, with different uh, approaches to each one of those types of exercises. So you do it fast, you do it long. You know, you do like a, you know a slower, gradual kind of progression of it. That's. Well, I, I think that I could add a little bit to what you said because that one. One would I definitely think that you should do a, a heavy strength component. Sure, you know I think that would. It's like benefit. phasing the test, right? Yeah, I, I think a heavy strength, and then I would actually even do one that probably pushes him a little bit further. So that really he, push the endurance. Yeah. Aspect. So yeah. and then exactly, it's just more focus on. Maybe he doesn't have the 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 vest on, or he has half the weight yeah. on the vest, and then I would exceed yeah. the uh, the distance or go past the amount of time that you're That's supposed what I mean. to do. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. So give him. So he's so he's building that tank a little bit. So you have like an endur an endurance day. Right. You have kind of like a a really heavy yep. power str- a strength day, and then something maybe in the I mean, middle. But the key yeah. is you're practicing the same skills. Right. That right. they're going to test you on. You know that makes uh, <laughs> the biggest the absolute biggest difference. I mean, look. If one of the biggest examples of what we're talking about is the Olympics, right? The Olympics are is one of the most competitive places where you're going to see athletic performance worldwide. And in the early days of the Olympics, what people thought would make the best athlete was general athletes. So shot putters, long distance runners, wrestlers, they yeah. all kind of look the same. Mm-hmm. But eventually, because they're so competitive and you wanted your country to win, you started to notice what was called the democratization of these particular events, where shot putters look nothing like long distance runners. And that's because to be a very good shot putter means you probably look a lot different and train a lot different. Different leverage. That's right. So if they're telling you what they're going to test you on, practice those skills and only do other skills as a way to prevent injury, to prevent imbalances, to improve mobility. But the whole approach where you're like, oh, you need strength and endurance. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do all this stuff that's around strength and endurance and do very little of the skills that they're going to test you on. That's that's the wrong approach, complete wrong approach. 